Hey, it's John with Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, we're gonna go over how to create an effective study plan for the Kaplan Nursing Entrance Exam. We're gonna talk about two methods for how to create this study schedule, and we're also gonna go ahead and actually create them together. I'm gonna to share my screen with you. We will create one so that by the end of this video, you will be able to make your own study schedule for the Kaplan exam. Also, in the description below, there is a link to a free Kaplan Nursing Entrance Exam practice test. There is a link to the Kaplan Facebook study group from Smart Edition Academy. There's a lot of people in there, just like yourself, preparing for this test, kind of sharing resources, what's working for them, asking questions, getting answers. So I want you guys to be a part of that community. So check out that link below and join the group. And then there's also gonna be links to the Smart Edition Academy online course, uh, study guides, all sorts of other helpful links. So check those all out in the description below. Now go ahead and subscribe if you get a chance and ring the bell for notifications because we make a lot of videos for the Kaplan test and we want you guys to be knowing when those videos come out. So the foundation of a good study system is something called active recall. And so what this basically means is that you are forcing your brain to recall the information that you just studied. And so this is going to be different from studying for an hour or two or studying for a day and then kind of walking away from that topic or subject and not going back to it. What we want to do is be continually going back and remembering this information, forcing our brain to recall what we learned and, and kind of bring it back up again. And this is how it really begins to uh, retain this information long term. So there's a couple different ways that you can practice this active recall. The first is going to be, let's say you're studying, you've got the study guide book or the online course and you have finished a chapter or a lesson. And what you want to do is maybe close the book, close the course, and on a Google Sheet or, or Word doc or just on a piece of paper, write down what you just learned. You don't have to go into detail. You can just make bullets and really high level stuff, but you want to, your, to make your brain recall what you just learned. This really drills it into your brain so it sort of becomes hard coded into your brain. So that's a good exercise. And then go back into the book or in the online course and see what you missed. See what you were not able to recall and kind of jot that down. And and this is something that can definitely help you guys out kind of permanently start to begin to, to learn this material. So another foundation to a good study plan is something called distributed learning. It sounds fancy, but it's really not. What it's really saying is you should be studying more frequently than kind of one study session, one big study session. So it's better to study for one hour over seven days than to study for seven hours in one day. And if we think about this, we see this, uh, you know, all throughout our lives, if not just in studying, but in learning new skills, learning to play an instrument, learning a new sport. So if you're trying to learn to play guitar, if you play for 15 minutes a day versus one hour on the weekend, you will get better faster. So the main method that we're going to talk about in creating a study schedule is called spaced repetition. So what this means is that you want to be spacing out when you're repeating different topics. And this again is going to play right into that active recall. So you might study something like algebra on a Monday but you wanna go back to it and you wanna space it out a little bit. So you wanna be studying algebra on Monday, on Tuesday you might study something else. Before going to the next thing, on Wednesday, you want to go back to algebra and maybe study those topics within algebra that are your weak areas. And then you want to go back to it again on Friday or Sunday or Tuesday. But the idea is you want to space out that repetition and this promotes that active recall. Now the study schedules are going to be based on something called revision timetables. And what that means is we're going to plot out on a calendar or in a Google Sheet or an Excel sheet. Uh, all of the topics and we're going to kind of plot out where we went where and when we want to revise these topics so there's two types of revision tables one is called a retrospective revision table which means we're going to do some studying we're going to look backwards at that studying we're going to see how we feel about each of those topics and you're going to identify the ones that you're not feeling that good about and then we're going to start studying those more but we're looking backwards to kind of see what topics we need more help on the other type of revision timetable is called a prospective revision timetable and that means we're only going to look into the future we're going to plot on a calendar each of the topics that we want to study on each day again we're going to do some of that repetition so we're adding those topics that we touched on and keep going back to them but we're going to plot that on a calendar and we're just going to stick to that but we're going to look forward only and kind of revise each topic and learn it more uh, according to that plan 
So let's actually create a, a retrospective revision timetable. So what we're going to do is have a Google Sheet or an Excel Sheet. And what we want to do is in the first column, list out all of the topics uh, for a particular subject on the test. Um, so in this case, for this sheet, which is for the Kaplan Nursing Entrance Exam, on the tabs on the bottom, we have science, reading, math, and writing. And in the science tab, we're going to list out all the science topics. Now, to get these topics that are on the science section, if you have a study guide book, you'll see that in your table of contents, or if you have an online course, uh, you'll see that. And I can show you where I got these from. This is from the Smart Edition uh, Academy online course. And when you take the science practice tests and you get the scored results, you'll see here um, that you'll have all of the topics available to you. So you can put those in here. And then in, on the first row, we're going to have the start date. That's going to be the first day that we start studying a particular topic. And then each time we go back to this particular topic, we're going to mark that here for the date that we started that topic. Now, this sheet is available in the description below. So you kind of have a template that you can start from. You don't have to create this from scratch. But let's go ahead and start filling it out. So let's say I started the cardiovascular system. The first day that I studied that is 625. And what you want to do is rate yourself for how well you feel like you know the cardiovascular system. So you can use a, a rating of maybe one through 10. You could use a color coding system where maybe red, uh, you don't know it well, green, you know it well, yellow, you're okay, but you need more help. Um, or when you take this practice test, uh, you know, I have 0% here because I just went to the end of it, but you might have a 33% or a 60% or an 100%. And you can fill in these percentages right in here. Um, and so that way you're kind of getting an idea of where you stand on all these topics. But let's say for cardiovascular system, I wasn't feeling very good about it. So I'm going to give myself a two, right? And then I went and studied in the same day, uh, the endocrine system, and I felt really good about it. I'm going to give myself an eight. And that is, I took the practice questions, I did the practice test, and I scored really well on all those questions, so I feel good about it. Um, let's say I studied one more on that day, and that one I felt okay, so I'm going to give myself a six, right? Um, and then I went on some a couple other days, let's say the next day, and I gave myself a one, and maybe I gave myself a five. Um, and you would go down and you would kind of just fill out this sheet, right? So I'll just kind of put in some different numbers here. Um, right. So now let's say uh, today is uh, Monday and I'm going to go ahead and study on Tuesday. Now, what would I want to study? What would be the best use of my time? What would make the biggest difference in my test scores uh, for what I should be focusing on? Well, I'm going to look at you know the lymphatic system. I give myself a one. So that's not very good and I need more practice in that. That's probably what I'm going to want to spend more time on. And maybe these ones that I rank myself as a two or a three, but I'm probably don't really need to go back to the skeletal system or the urinary system. I'm feeling good on that. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the lymphatic system and let's say uh, on 628, I studied the lymphatic system and I'm feeling a lot better. I answered some more practice questions and got the correct answer. So I'm going to give that a five. I might go back here, study the cardiovascular system again. And I'm going to give myself also a, maybe I felt a little better. So I'm going to give myself a six. Um, and then I'm going to focus on the organization of the human body, right? Because that's also another area that was my weakness. And I do that the next day on 629. And I feel much better about that. So I'm going to give myself an eight. And you continue to fill this out. And so you're kind of looking backwards at everything you've studied. You ranked yourself on how well you feel about it. And then that's what you're going to study on that day. So each day when you go to study, you're going to figure out looking backwards what it is that you want to study. And you just kind of continue to fill this out um, over the weeks and the months that you're working. And eventually you should be getting to a column here where everything is a 10 or a 9 or at least, you know, that uh, 7, 8, 9, you're feeling good about everything. And you can just kind of continue to focus on these weak areas. Um, and so, you know, I might revise this one again on, let's say, 7, 3, and I finally got myself to a 9, All right? Um, so what would I want to go back and study? You know, just keep going backwards on these numbers. So study the thing that you ranked yourself a 5. 
right? And so that's how you do this. This is how the uh, retrospective revision timetable works. You put in that study time and you're constantly looking backwards at what you don't feel good about. And that's what you're going to study on that day. So that is the retrospective revision timetable. Now let's go ahead and look at creating a prospective revision timetable. So for this, we're going to use a calendar. And what we're going to do is plot out on each day what we're going to study. So we don't have like with the retrospective looking backwards. And today I woke up, I didn't know what I was going to study. I kind of looked at what my weaknesses were and decided that day what I'm going to study. With the prospective, we're only looking forward and we're plotting out every single day what it is that we're going to study and we stick to that. So what you want to do is put a topic. Uh, let's just go ahead here. I'll put um, cardio and maybe I'll study. Let me go back. I'm going to put like cardio, uh, urinary and skeletal. So I'm going to study these three systems today. So what you want to do is put the topics that you're going to study in a day, and then you want to put those same topics the next day. So I'll put those the next day, and then you want to put them one week later and then one month later or, you know, four or five weeks later. So I'll just go out here. And what you're doing is getting that spaced repetition. So you're building that into your study schedule so that each week you're kind of going back to that material and getting that active recall, doing that spaced repetition, doing a lot of the things that we talked about that are proven methods for retaining this kind of information. So then we'll go to Wednesday and it's just going to be the same thing. So we'll maybe go to uh, the muscular system. All right. So that's going to be on that day. And then we'll put it again the following day one week later and one month later. Now, as you're doing this and you're filling out this calendar, you can do that same thing where you're kind of ranking yourself and, you know, putting a number or a color that's going to help you get an idea of how you feel about those topics. And you can adjust this if you need to. So if you really feel like you're not doing well and just studying this, these topics, one, two, three, and four times is not going to be enough. We can certainly build that into have some more time on the calendar. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, give themselves a good amount of time and you should, you know, at least a month, four to eight weeks, something like that, if not longer. Some people try and cram it all into a week. And for that, these kind of study schedules aren't really going to help you because there's no way you can fit everything into a, a, a short amount of time like a week. But if you have eight weeks, you should be able to fit in all the topics for all the subject areas. And you can certainly be putting in the ones that you know, you felt weak about already. So if you're a math, you know, whiz and you're getting a 90% on those practice tests, you might not need to put math into your study schedule at all. Uh, science is your weakness or uh, reading or writing. And then you can kind of focus that on your study schedule. So that's what this looks like. This is the prospective where you're really building out an entire calendar of what you're going to study and when, and you are building in the spaced repetition. So that's uh, pr the prospective timetable. Here's a question we get a lot in the Facebook study group. Um, should you stick to one subject or should you kind of mix up different subjects throughout the week or you know even in a particular day um, or just stick to one subject? So I think if you've been watching this video, you get the idea that it's a little bit of both, but you, you kind of can totally start with one subject. That's okay, let's start with math. We're gonna go through those topics. And by the time we move to science, say, and that's okay to just move on to another topic, we're still gonna to wanna to have to focus on some of those weak areas. And as we're studying science, we're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of room to work on those weak areas from math. We're gonna bring those over, we're gonna carry them over. We're gonna master most of science and we will move on to the writing section. But in the writing, while we're studying that writing section, we want to leave a little bit of time to continue to reinforce some of those math topics we, we weren't mastering yet. Uh, if we're having trouble in any of those science areas, we want to work that in a little bit while we're doing the writing section. So that's kind of the idea, uh, but it is okay to start with a section or group sections like that. Now, sometimes putting a little bit of pressure on yourself doesn't sound good. You already have a lot of pressure. You've got to pass this test. There's a lot riding on it. But if you put a little bit of pressure on your schedule, uh, that can really help you. And so what I mean by that is if you want to study between 1 and 4 p.m., if you have something in the morning, 
right before 1 p.m. and you have something right at 4 o'clock, you have a hard stop, you're going to use that time much more effectively because it's the only time you have. You have a little bit of pressure on that time. Let's say you have to go to work at 4 p.m. You're not going to waste the time between 3 and 4 that's your only study time. And the same in the morning. I'm super busy this morning. I've got you know a million things to do, but I've set aside 1 to 4 to do my studying and then I got to leave at 4 you'll do much better. So if you create your study schedule with that timing and you're saying picking out what hours you want to study, I think it's okay to kind of put it right up against something else that you have to do or, or right after something that you have to do. And that can be more effective than just saying, I want to study between one and four, but I have nothing to do all day. What are the chances you actually study between one and four? You're going to find a reason to you know, not study in the morning, push it off between one and four, get into the afternoon, evening, and you might not get anything done. So that little bit of pressure helps and you know, pressure creates diamonds and you guys are all diamonds in the rough. Uh, as soon as you pass this test, get into your programs, you're full diamonds. So I want to see that for all of you guys. So I talked about those two other videos, so I want you guys to check those out. We'll put them right up here, and that's gonna be, again, how to pass the Kaplan test and how to study for the Kaplan test kind of more in general. Now, I hope you guys got a lot of value out of this video and you're gonna be able to go create your own study plans. If you liked it, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. If you have something you wanna share with everybody else, uh, let us all know, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, so until then, we'll see you guys in the next video.